In a book I'm reading right now by Dallas Willard, he gives an example of a fighter pilot who is training for combat. He's doing evasive maneuvering and barrel rolls and twists and turns and flips and all these things. He pulls back on the joystick, thinking that he's going to skyrocket up into the air, gaining altitude. But in fact, he didn't realize in that second that he was actually upside down. So when he pulled back on the joystick, he rams his jet right into the ground. It blows up and he dies. It's such a good example and illustration for today. So many people don't even realize they're upside down. There's so many competing truths and information and things being flown around in our brain through screens into our eyes and into our brain. People saying so many different things. It's utter chaos. The noise is overwhelming. And so many people are upside down. They just don't know it. So how do we know what is right side up? Well, let's look at the heart. Let's start there. So many people are caught up in their feelings and that's how they make decisions. How they feel dictates so much around them. Not just their attitudes, but the actions that they take in life. Well, Jeremiah 17, 9 says the heart is more deceitful than anything else. So the Bible tells us that the heart is not what should lead us. We should lead our hearts, not the other way around. And that makes sense, right? Because you're up and down and up and down. Your feelings are nuts. Most of the time, you don't even understand them. Why in the world will we ever allow our feelings to dictate our behavior and our decision making. So we know that's not gonna work. Well, what about the world? What about pop culture? What about the things that come through your eyeballs and into your brain from your screens? What about what the world says is popular and good and right and true? Well, I don't think that that's what we should rely upon, right? We know in Matthew chapter seven, verses 21 to 27, there's quite a bit in there, but part of it says, don't build your house on the sand because when you build your house on the sand and the foundation is laid on the sand what happens when the storms come what happens when circumstances rage well that house is not going to stand right and so one of the things that's talking about is our culture is the same way our culture and what is right and true and popular and normal is up and down it's never consistent Thousands of years ago, it was perfectly acceptable in some cultures to eat people. Not so much anymore, right? That's sort of changed. But now we're dealing with things in pop culture that are absolutely weird. Maybe we're not eating people, but we certainly are calling things true and right and acceptable that are absolutely absurd and bonkers and strange. So we know that culture and what is normal, normal, according to society, that's not what we can hang our hat on, right? So what do we hang our hat on? <clears throat> it's very clear. Matthew 7, 21 to 27, it starts off with, not everybody who comes to me, Jesus says, right? Not everybody who cries, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Even if you're doing ministry things and you appear to be a good Christian and you check that box by going to church on Sundays it doesn't mean you're going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's those who do the will of the Father. And it follows up with building a house on the sand versus building your house on the rock. So my question for you, my challenge this week, are you building your house on the rock? The rock is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. It's the only compass we have that shows us what true north is. It's the only thing that should guide us, not our emotions and not what's popular in the world. It's the only thing we can hang our hat on is never changing, always accurate, 100% true. All right? Now you say, well, I'm so busy, Eric. I just don't have time to, to be in the Word. Someone told me this at one point in my life. He said, hey, Eric, if I gave you, you know, an extra $100, to wake up 30 minutes early every day, would you do it? Every day, 100 extra dollars to wake up 30 minutes early. It's like, yeah, I'd do that. At the time I was a Marine, I was <laughs> dirt poor. Yeah, I'd wake up 30 minutes early. I'd wake up an hour early for an extra 100 bucks a day. He looked at me and he said, 
So what you're saying is that money is more important than God? So you're willing to wake up early for $100, but you're not willing to wake up early to spend time with Jesus by getting into his word and being fed by the true bread and spending time with your Father in heaven. So it's something to think about. My challenge for you, let everything that informs us in our decision making and our attitudes, our actions, following the will of God, determining what that looks like, let all of that come from the Word of God, the Bible, the Scriptures. Let's build our house on the rock, gents. I love you so much. I hope you have an amazing week. Spend time with Jesus. Above all else, put down your social media. Get somewhere quiet. Turn off the noise. And get with your Father in Heaven.